Hey, it's Something Student here, and today I'm going to showcase a little program I've been working on, and this is going to be part one on my Brick Breaker game using JavaFX and Scene Builder. So, as you can see in the background, I have my first version, where for now we have a ball bouncing around, we have bricks which can be broken, and when we hit the edge, we just bounce back. So, there's no losing area at this point, and we have no paddle as well. Or we don't really have a pedal we need to hit to keep the game going and not lose the game simply. And if you've seen some of my last few videos, you might recognize that a lot of the functionality is actually based on those. I have my bouncing ball and I have my collision detection, which is kind of my workflow where in this case I decided to make a brick breaker game and then first started to work on each of these components to see if I could get it working and to see what to do. First, I got a bouncy ball, I got some collision detection, now I'm bringing it all together to create a brick breaker game. So, let's go through some of it. As mentioned, quite a lot of the code is actually inspired on all of the same as some I've been talking about in the last few videos, which I will link up here probably and in the description as well. But let's just talk about the conceptual part of my setup. I have an anchor pane, I have my circle, that's actually all the components I have because my rectangles are created manually using a script. I then have an array list containing all my bricks. So I create all the bricks on the screen and add them to array list. I have my movement, which in this case is one on the x-axis and three on the y, which would be like this. And instead of it being like one, one or two, two, one, three, make it a bit more narrow. I think it's about a 45 degree angle. I'm actually not sure it could be calculated, but to make the movement a bit more narrow as you can see when we're going up and down we're not going like at a 90 degree angle but i think it's close to a 45 not 100 percent sure but as the decision we don't have a timeline which i've been talking about quite a few times before now with a keyframe which defines how often is my event gonna happen so in this case i try to set up a duration so every 10 milliseconds i don't actually know if it's gonna run exactly this fast but that's another video checking if actually my 100 FPS is accomplished, but I then every frame move my circle using its current position and the delta change. I then check if I'm colliding with the screen, so at the bottom of the scene. And if my brick array is empty, not it. So if it's not empty, so if we still have bricks on the screen, we would then remove a brick if we are colliding with that brick. And we're then also checking collision the brick. Just very simply first checking if our circle is intercepting with any of the bricks. And if we are, we're trying to find if we are on the right, left button or top part of the brick. Check how the ball should be bouncing. So if we're like hitting the side, just bounce right off. If we're hitting a button, we're bouncing down and so on. As you can see when we're hitting this one, for example, which is another part that's kind of interesting which wasn't honestly on purpose, but when I hit the edge of the screen, as you can see there, it goes straight back, like that. If I hit the bottom of a box of brick, I would just go down. If I hit the side, I'll go up. If I hit the top, I'll go back up. But if I hit a corner, it actually goes back from where it comes from, because it's technically detecting hitting the right and the bottom side in this case, like that. It looks a bit weird and I might fix it, but I don't know, it's actually also quite funny and interesting. A little bit different. And where did it come from? So I also have an initialize where I just set my timeline. So how often is my timeline going to run into whatever? I create my bricks and I start my timeline. I also then check collision with the scene, which I also already made another video about. So you can check that out if you want. As mentioned, I check collision for my bricks, which is kind of inspired, by, but a bit modified. And then create my bricks, which is also quite interesting, actually. We're using a double for loop, so a for loop inside a for loop. Create this pattern, and we're just then just defining the width and the height of my pattern. How far I'm going to be changing. I'm then going to create a rectangle using its i and j sizes giving it the color red, adding it to the scene, and adding it to the bricks. A realist. 
And also instead of just creating them next to each other to get some empty spaces, I made a space checker. So if space check modulus two is equal to zero, so which means if it's an even number, create a rectangle. If it's not an even number, don't create a rectangle. And it's allow us to have this space. I think it be look a bit cleaner at least. And as you can see, this create bricks create this pattern, which I thought was quite nice. So that's pretty much what I have so far. So the next few days, I'll continue working on this, adding more stuff. And please, as well, let me know in the comments if you have any great suggestions. But otherwise, this is all I had for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I wish you all a wonderful day.